Carrying on with my aunt's kitchen build, let's move on to part two, the stove side cabinet. Hey guys, how's it going? So, like the name suggests, this is going to be a narrow cabinet to sit beside my aunt's new stove. As part of her kitchen renovation, she got rid of her wall-mounted oven and got rid of this section of cabinet to fit the new standard floor model, which left this small space between the edge of the oven and the hallway, which is where this build comes in. This project started fairly similarly to the last one with unloading the truck, probably because it's the same footage as before, but since I didn't record disassembling absolutely everything, I wanted to point this cabinet out. More on this one in a bit. With the truck unloaded and the old cabinets disassembled for potential salvage and reuse, I ripped a sheet of plywood to width at the table saw. Then with the crosscut supports up on the workbench, I taped the cut line with some painter's tape to prevent chipping the veneer, set up a straight edge, and cut the plywood to length. With the pieces now a more manageable size, I cut them to final width at the table saw. To cut out the toe kick on the new cabinet, I just had to reference the still intact old cabinet base to get the dimensions, mirror them over to the new plywood, and cut out the corner with the jigsaw. To keep the jigsaw from blowing out the veneer on the inside of the cabinet, I just clamped a scrap piece of plywood to the backside and cut through it as well. Since I already had some scrap left over at this point, this piece was already the perfect width for the bottom panel of the stove side cabinet, so I marked out the length and cut it to length at the miter saw. For the rest of the cabinet braces, I cleaned up one edge of another scrap over at the table saw, set up a stop block, and cut it to length at the miter saw as well. Since I was completely done with drilling pocket holes using my old pocket hole jig after doing the face frames in the previous video, if you missed that you can check it out up here, I figured it was finally time to upgrade and jig a bunch of pocket holes in the cabinet braces with my new pocket hole jig. Yes, you heard me right. Moving on to assembly, I decided to give the toe kick brace a little bit more backing and put a hardwood brace in behind it, and glue and pin nail it into place. And here is where I learned a little bit of an expensive lesson, which I'll let past John explain. I used the wrong f***ing screws. What's wrong with this picture? You know inch and a quarter screws are a bit too long for half inch to half inch plywood. I need to cut a new piece. I don't have any more of this plywood so I'm going to need to go get more. Great. With the new side panel cut I carried on fastening the braces with the pocket hole screws and finally got the other side fastened on as well. I decided to keep the bottom shelf loose at this point, so I would have an easier time of securing the cabinet to the wall when it came time to that. Partly because the flooring wasn't going to be done before I was finished my work, and partly because this shelf will be secured on all four sides, if not like it's going anywhere. With the cabinet mostly assembled, it's time to move on to the face frame. At the miter saw, and using some of the oak strips I milled to size last video, I cut them to rough length for both sides and the cross pieces. Then making sure I had the side pieces lined up with the sides of the cabinet, I held down the cross piece, marked the length with the marking knife, and cut them to final length. I figured the drill was quieter than the table or miter saws, and it would be less disruptive to work on the face frame later at night, so now that I have the pieces cut to size for the face frame, I set it off to the side and figured I would move over to the countertop. Basically here, I just need the material. The kitchen is getting a new laminate veneer throughout, so I don't have to worry as much about making it look perfect. This was the old eating bar that my aunt removed, and while I didn't need all of it, it was already close to the width I needed, and the thickness would match what was already there. So I ripped off the short side of the L with the circular saw, and ran it through the table saw to get rid of the rounded edge, and then again to get it to final width. Then over at the miter saw, I cut the countertop to final length, filled in the two missing sides of the bottom of the countertop with some scrap plywood, and took one more pass through the table saw to clean up the edges. Since the original countertops all had an exposed oak quarter inch chamfer on the top edge, I needed to replicate that. Using the width of my push stick as a depth, because why not, I cut out a three quarter inch rabbit along the front and outside edge of the countertop, cut some salvaged oak to the same size, cut a 45 degree miter in the oak, and glued and pinned it into place on the countertop. Then I cut off the excess with my pull saw and set the countertop aside while the glue dries. Jumping back to the face frame, I set up my pocket hole jig and jigged a couple pocket holes into the cross braces 
And same as last time, glue, right angle clamped, pre-drilled through the pocket hole into the sides of the face frame to prevent it from splitting, screw it into place, and set it off to the side to let the glue dry as well. Now that the glue on the countertop is dried, I head over to the router table, throw in a flush trim bit, and flush up the oak inlay with the sides and top of the countertop. Then I throw the chamfer bit in the router table and after a quick test on some scrap, yep, looks good. I chamfer the oak edge on the countertop to match the existing countertops. In hindsight, I should have done the routing on the top of the countertop with my trim router. In theory, my cuts would have been straighter as the handheld router would have had a little bit less wobble than the countertop did on the table. Luckily, I was able to clean up my messy cuts with a hand plane later on in the build. With the face frame now dry, I glue pin and clamp it to the front of the cabinet to dry. And with that drying up, I figured it was a good time to fasten the countertop down, so I clamped it into place as well, countersunk and screwed it into place. With the face frame dry, again, I sand down the face to smooth out any of the transitions between the sides and the cross braces and gave the sides of the cabinet a quick once over. Then I threw a 1 8 inch round over bit in the router and knocked off the corners of the face frame just to smooth it out a bit. To get in the corners, I just used a bit of adhesive back sandpaper on a scrap piece to replicate the round over as close as possible. At some point in this process, I realized that I ended up cutting the countertop about one inch too short. Currently, it overhangs the face frame by about half an inch, but once I add the 7 8 inch thick drawer fronts and door, yeah. To fix this off camera, I just glued and pinned a chunk of oak to the back of the countertop to make up the length and remounted the countertop. You can see it clamped up in the next shot here. I'll just have to rechamp for that corner. I also edge banded this little bit of exposed plywood in the toe kick, but it doesn't look like I recorded that either. With the cabinet now nearly built, I'm going to start on the drawers. Unfortunately, the face frame is in the way of the drawer slides, so I will need to build out the drawer slides. Using some of the salvage material, I ripped some scrap plywood into two inch thick strips and glued them together to get most of the thickness needed. With those drying up, I move on to building the drawers. I ripped some plywood into strips and cut a half inch deep rabbit off the bottom of the plywood. Then over at the miter saw I cut the pieces to length and head back to the table saw with the crosscut sled to cut the rabbits out of the sides of the plywood. With the drawer dry fit I measure out the distance needed for the bottom panels, cut them to size and it's time for assembly. Basically a lot of glue and clamps later I have two drawer boxes. Spoiler alert, these are not the final drawers. Now that the drawer mount rails are dry, I clean up the sides at the table saw, cut them to length at the miter saw, and glue and pin nail them into place. Like I said earlier, these rails got me most of the thickness needed. For the drawer slides to clear the face frames, I still needed to chisel out a little bit more of the face frame. Then using a couple clamps on the rail to sit the drawer slide onto, I screwed the drawer slides into place. And now with the drawers dry, in theory, it's time to install them. I didn't notice my error until right here. These drawers are a half inch too narrow. If this was a project for myself, I probably would have just shimmed the sides out to get it to the thickness needed, but since this is a commission project, let's do it properly. Off camera, I rebuilt the drawers to the proper width, and now I just have a couple random project boxes hanging around the shop. Using an offcut of face frame, I mark out the offset for the drawer slide and drop the drawers into place, using my pencil as a spacer between the cross brace and the drawer. With the drawer slides connected, I'm able to get the first two screws in, then I detach the drawer slides and can screw in the last two screws and slide the drawer back in place. And with that, the stove side cabinet is ready to install. At this point, I really didn't have to do much for install since my aunt is going to be redoing the flooring. Basically, I just had to drop it into place and threw a screw into a stud behind it to make sure that it wouldn't fall over in the meantime and pop the drawers back in. Since my aunt is taking care of the staining and finishing herself, as far as this cabinet goes, I'm done. And with that being said, I'm going to call it a video. This is part two of a multi-part project. There are a few more cabinets that I built here, as well as some cope and stick or rail and style, whichever it is, raised panel doors for the cabinets. The next few videos will be coming out in the next few weeks, or a link to the playlist will be up here if they are out by now, and I hope to see you over on those videos as well. So, thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can follow me on Instagram at JohnTheShriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video, and have a good one.